Good afternoon. Um, my name is Arun. This is Karthik, and Humphrey's out of town right now, but he wishes he could join us. Um, so today we're going to be talking about Gaussian process-based filtering for neural decoding. As you can see on the right, this is the current state of the art. And on the left is where we'd like to be. You might have seen on Engadget and other news sites recently a lot of stuff about prosthetics and things. And really, do you all you want to do is feed yourself marshmallows, or would you like to take out Spider-Man? Make your choice. So what exactly is our problem statement? Since we're still quite behind where we would like to be, we're going to address the simple task of a non-human primate in the vernacular, vernacular, a monkey, trying to reach one of eight targets. And what we want to see is that given some neural observations, a signal like, say, the spike count of the, of the neurons, we would like to predict the state. Where is the end effector going to be? In this case, it's the monkey's arm or prosthetic, whatever, trying to get to one of these eight targets. You can see in the graphical model kind of how we phrase this problem. And, um, the current state of the art uses a linear both transition and observation model. How do the states change? Are they linear? They assume it's linear and works with that. So you can see this is pretty much a problem. Like, how many people really think the neurons and the state, this high-level state, really is a linear, linear system? Probably not. So we'd like to adjust our observation model to use something that is nonlinear. We could improve the Kalman filter and go to the uncentered Kalman filter, which doesn't make this linear observation model or a linear observation model. Um, so you can kind of see here briefly, this is how the unsensitive common filter works. But like you just said, the unsented common filter requires uh, some parametric form, some form of a nonlinear function. But we have no idea what f really looks like. So what do we do? So as we saw in class, Gaussian processes are a pretty convenient non-parametric way to uh, model nonlinear functions whose parametric form we don't know. So what we do is we train a different Gaussian process for each neuron. So the input to, the, uh, to each Gaussian process is the this is state. In this case, it's the uh, position and velocity of the computer cursor. And the output is the activity of each neuron. And uh, now you have uh, your observation model, which is mapped by 97 um, Gaussian process regressions, because they have 97 neurons. And we can use a small extension of the unsented Kalman filter called the Gaussian process UKF. Uh, if you want more details on that, the reference is right up here. But regression, GP regression is a little bit slow, and running 97 of them at each time step will basically mean your monkey is never going to do anything in real time. So what do we do? We, um, there is reason to believe that we don't really need all 97 dimensions to explain this neural activity. So we can hope to reduce these, uh, the dimensionality of your space, and maybe reduce the number of GPs that we'll have to regress at each time point. So we tried um, PCA, which is uh, sort of the first thing to try. and. Uh, Factor analysis, which is a, uh, which is a probabilistic ext extension of PCA, which assumes a linear Gaussian relationship between your latents and your high, high D space. The way we uh, choose the number of dimensions for PCA is we just pick the number of principal components that uh, captures at least 90% 90, 90 of the variance. And for our data set, we got a reduction from 97 dimensions to around uh, 58. And for factor analysis, because it's a probabilistic framework, we can use um, cross-validated log likelihoods to figure out what the best dimensionality is. And it actually reduces uh, from 97 all the way down to 15. So um, here are some results. The first obvious way to compare is our um, end goal, which is better decoding. So you can see the video on the left. Um, so the green, um, hope you can see it clearly, but the green lines are the current state of the art, and the red is uh, the GPU here. And you can see in, uh, for each trial, the GPU here the ground truth, which is blue, much more uh, closely. So if you want numbers for these, the RMS uh, improvement in the RMS error is about 33% over um, the top of the art, uh, state of the art uh, current filter. And we get a 42% improvement in the final cost position as well. But how do we know that our new um, GP based observation model is actually doing better? In order to uh, test this, what we did was we uh, um, we use the generative test, so our observation model is all generative, which means that you can plug in the ground truth um, cursor state, and you should hope to see something that looks exactly like what the neuron is doing. Uh, so the blue bars in the figure on the right are, act, are experimental results of what the neurons are doing. The red line captures what the linear, state on, uh, the linear observation model is doing, while the green line captures what um, our model thinks the neurons are doing. And you can see consistently over uh, all the If you want more details, please visit our poster or read our report.